Hey, what's up, everyone? It's SDZ Gamer, and welcome back to Let's Play Dual Destinies, uh, where we last left off in this video. We just finished the first investigation of the Monstrous Turnabout, and this is the first day of the trial for Monstrous Turnabout that we're covering today. I'm gonna hope it only is gonna take at least two parts at most, but you know, I might take a while. <laughs> let's go! Let's go! You okay, Athena? You've been really antsy ever since we got here. I'm just excited. This is my first real court case, after all. Yeah, a real ball of excitement she is. I know just what she needs. Athena! Eek! Didn't you ever learn about indoor and outdoor voices? I'm just trying to show you the best way to relieve your pretrial jitters. By scaring the daylights out of me? No, I find that shouting I'm fine is a, in a loud voice really relieves stress. It's part of my course of steel voice workout, and a must for it before every trial. Y you want me to shout? Here? That's right. Here, I'll go first, then you try. I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine! Alright, um... I I'm Athena Sykes. And I'm fine! Hmm. I think that actually worked! I thought it might help. Always works for me. An old friend of mine from junior high and I say it all the time. I see. A proven remedy to calm the soul. I like it! Hey, how about we finish off with... A race around the courthouse! The point is to relieve stress, not get totally exhausted. What's with all the racket, you two? Ah, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Just a little voice workout. Hey, what's with the suit? Oh, this? I was thinking about getting my attorney's badge back after- that's all. That's all? That's huge news! But why now? I have a feeling I'll be needed in the courtroom again sometime soon. But we can talk about that, that, about that another time. No fair. Inquiring minds wants to know. But wow. I'm so used to him in his usual laid-back clothes. That suit makes him look like a million dollars. By the way, have you heard about prosecu the prosecutor signed to this case? Yeah. He's serving time. But before that, he was a prosecutor. He also uses psychology? That's right. I've heard the rumors about he was back before his conviction. Using the power of suggestion, he could make even the most stalwart defendants, defendants confess. Psychology in a courtroom. I've been hearing a lot about that lately. Basically, it's just to manipulate everyone! Derp. So he must be a pretty scary guy, considering he's a prison inmate and all. They say they also... So they say. They also say he'll cut you down if you talk too much. Ah, I knew he was going to be bad news. <laughs> it's probably just hyperbole. Hyperbol. At least, I hope, for your sake. Wow, thanks. Wait, so is it true or not? Right, please. Let's just say you should be concise and choose your words carefully. If you'd like to keep that head of yours attached to you, the rest of your body, that is. Yikes! Better tone my tone down my cords of steel, too. So, are you all ready? It might be a good idea to check the court records again before stepping into the ring. Right, right, Mr. Wright. But I'm fine. I'll be watching from the gallery. Good luck. Thanks! Okay, let's do this! The odds of pulling this off are ridiculously low, but that's nothing new. Believe in our client. Seek the truth. That's all we can do. Hang in there, Mayatema. Here comes justice! Bop, 
bum 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 Into the hork cart house we go! Ugh, excuse me. Court is now in session for the trial of Damien Tenma. Apollo Justice Defense Team Leader is ready, Your Honor. I know that big booming voice anywhere. As chipper as ever, eh, Mr. Justice? But who is the young lady next to you? I am Athena Sykes, Mr. Justice Junior Partner and fresh out of law school. Well now, full of beans too, eh? Excellent. Makes an old man feel young again. Now, for the prosecution. We're fighting a ghost. Hmm, it appears the prosecution is not yet ready. Never fear, for I shall explain. It's just a minor pr procedural complication, Your Honor. The prosecutor for this case is being escorted from prison as we speak. Prison? Oh, yes, of course. I almost forgot that he is currently serving time. Mm, this would be good. Yup, Prosecutor Blackquill's an inmate. But even a convicted murderer still got a job to do and duties to perform. The only duties they should be doing is going to the bathroom. Um, who, who's that with his back to us over there? That's him. I'm sure of it. Prosecutor Blackwell. <clears throat> Is the prosecution ready? <laughs> Enough jabbering. Get on with it already. <laughs> ah, of course, forgive me. Why are all the people related to this case so scary? Very well, Prosecutor Blackwell. Your opening statement, if you please. Huh? What's the matter? Must we continue to fritter away like this? It is all right there in the indictment, and an opening statement would be pointless. Uh, let's find a Blackwell voice, right? Pointless? Oh, um, well... Looks like the cat, or in this case, the prosecutor has the c judge's tongue. But, but, we need an opening statement as an overview of the case at hand. Hmm. Well then, your baldness, if you so very Im if it's so very important, why don't you do the honors? Who? Me? There's a term for people who whine and fuss about how they need silly, useless things and then decide they no longer want them once it's theirs. A selfish old fool. Huh? Wait, was that the prosecution's opening statement? Hmm. Old dotards such as you are a plague among the young. I pity your y poor grandchildren. Or is it great-grandchildren? All these years, I thought the opening statement was the prosecutor's job. But I suppose I could give it a try. Might be a nice change of pace. What? He actually fell for that? That must have been the power of suggestion Mr. Wright was talking about. Hmm. <clears throat> the opening statement. Huh. Hmm. Let's see here. The victim was one Rex Cuby, alderman of Ninetales Vale. And the defendant, Damien Tenma, mayor of Tenma Town, is accused of his murder. And why, pray tell, was the mayor arrested? His prints were on the murder weapon. Plus, he had a motive, the elimination of the biggest roadblock to the municipal merger. The caretaker and the secretary 
Other potential suspects both have alibis. And his daughter, who was also in the vicinity at the time of the incident, has no motive. So, in a nutshell... I'd have to say the charges against the defendant are incontrovertible. Bravo, your baldness. Your years of experience shine bright like your head. Oh, ho, ho. Flurry will get you everywhere. He's playing Simon Says with the judge. Moving right along now, let's hear from our first witness for today, Detective Fulbright. Boom, boom, boom. <sighs> witness, please state your name and occupation. I am the defect... Defective. You are a defective detective. I am the detective assigned to this case, Bobby Fulbright. Oh, and I'll also be keeping tabs on old Black Quill here. I also heard you would provide protection if it ever came to that. Hmm. <laughs> it would seem I have been sorely underestimated. Wait, who's protecting who from what? Still, I truly believe anyone can turn their life around, even old Black will her. Ah! Fulbright. Save your platitudes for funerals. Get on with your statement. Ha ha ha! That's the spirit! Justice must be swift and true. I see it in your eyes. There is hope for your rehabilitation and return to society. I will never give up. Oh. I will never give up on you. Prosecutor Blackwell doesn't seem too intimidated. Doesn't seem to intimidate Detective Fulbright. Well, you know what they say. Ignorance is bliss. Oh, so that's why Detective Fulbright was assigned to Blackwell. He's so oblivious. Yep. Now, let's have our first statement, Detective Fulbright. You got it. But first, I'd like to say the defense that justice will ultimately prevail. So you're saying Apollo Justice is going to prevail, right? <laughs> Alderman Kubi was murdered with a spear that had been in the, on the wall. The fingerprints of the defendant, Damien Tenma, were found on the murder weapon. At the time, Alderman Kubi was asleep from a drug he unwittingly ingested. Mayor Tenma attacked his helpless victim, impaling him like a human skish kebab. And the sudden pain jolted the, the victim awake, and he grabbed a statue and struck back. Alderman Kumi had been slipped some kind of sleep-inducing drug? That's right! The accused was scared because the Alderman was a former pro wrestler. So he slipped him a drug to make sure he'd be out cold and defenseless. Here's the autopsy report to prove it. Cool, thanks. And the victim managed to attack his attacker, despite being impaled by a spear? That sounds almost unsuperhuman. Is it even possible? Well, he was a former, former pro wrestler, after all. That sphere was probably nothing more than a mosquito bite to him. Uh, pro wrestler or not, that would hurt. Him. Not so fast. Don't try to brush it all off by saying the Alderman had been a pro wrestler. Do you really expect us to believe he could fight back after being skewered by a spear? Hmm. <laughs> Never heard of incredible feats. Never heard of the incredible feats of which man is capable of a, in a pinch, have you? Like the samurai of yore, wrestlers can battle through intense pain. It sharpens their senses. I used to talk about it with the former wrestler I met in the clink. I don't know. It still sounds kind of far-fetched. Does it now? Then perhaps we should test the theory on you with the edge of my blade. I didn't sign up for this! <laughs> and, your and so your life is spared. For now. You put away your weeble sword. Please let those shackles be made of titanium. I don't want to die. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> my investigations are as thorough as they are foolproof. Or my name isn't Fulbright. I vow to resign immediately if I ever make a false duress. The accused prince were on the weapon, and he's the one person without an alibi. Quite decisive evidence, wouldn't you agree, your baldness? Hmm. Hmm. The defendant is sounding guiltier by the minute. He 
has the judge leaning toward a guilty verdict, and the trial's just barely begun. Hmm. What's more, a curious rumor about the accused is making the rounds. They say he seeks the merger for the purpose of freeing Tenma Taro from his imprisonment. Truth be told, I can think of no real reason to show interest in that backwards burg. Perhaps he is he's a complete nutter and really does seek to release an imaginary demon. Either way, either way, he is raving mad and more than capable of murdering the Alderman. The mayor is a strange one, alright. I already went to a blood drive, but instead of donating, he tried to take a withdrawal. Order! There will be no gossiping in my court. Your baldness. Please take a gander at those charms plastered across his cranium. I hear they are meant to keep him safe from possession by the demon Tenma Taro. Then again... I'm taking screenshots. Perhaps he's already under the demon's spell. Behold! The lunatic appears poised to lun at, lunge at you at any moment. Eep! Hold it! Shoot the fuck up! The rumors and quirks of Mayor Tema have no relevance to this case. Besides, those charms on his head? They're... they're just a fashion statement, I think. Hmm... Come to think of it, such things don't seem relevant to the case, do they? The prosecution will refrain from dragging our client's reputation down the, through the mud. Oh, what a dreadfully fearsome lass we have here. Whew, thanks for that lifeline, Athena. Careful, Apollo. He has the judge dancing in the palm of his hand. The power of suggestion is one of the more powerful tools in Simon Blackwell's arsenal. He's trying to manipulate everyone's impression to suit his objectives. This guy really is bad news. In any case, it seems the victim did manage to defend himself despite being in pale. What sort of weapon did he use against his attacker? None other than this statue right here. It appears to be a statue of two strange creatures locked in battle. Two yokai, to be exact. One on one side is the nine-tailed fox, and the other Tenma Taro. Quite interesting, if you think about it. It's as though this very case were rendered in art. Mr. Justice, you may proceed with your course examination. <laughs> about time. Okay, we're presenting that statue at... The sudden pain jolted the victim awake. Because I believe it was in a cloth at the time. But the sudden pain... Objection! But ah um, Did the alderman really strike the mayor? What?! Are you questioning my sense of justice?! Your so-called justice needs to find itself a pair of legs to stand on. You're, you claim the alderman struck back after a mayor put the mayor put a spear through him. But the statue he supposedly used to defend himself creates a major hole in your theory. It would appear that the defense has a counter-argument. Very well. Let's hear what the defense thinks is odd about the detective's statue theory. There are no fingerprints. Ba -ba there are no fingerprints on this supposedly crucial piece of evidence. And if you look at the crime scene photo, you'll notice that the alderman isn't wearing gloves. Yes, I believe he is quite gloveless indeed. If he touches the statue with his bare hands, he should have left some fingerprints. Detective Fulbright, you did take that into account during your investigation, didn't you? Ah! This can't be happening! D -d did I arrest the wrong man? Fucking love your ejection theme, Apollo. You did it, Apollo! You knocked Detective Fulbright off his high horse! Well, it's just one point in our favor. Who do you suppose club clubbed the mayor if it wasn't the alderman? Hmm. Well, if it wasn't the alderman... That means someone else must have clubbed the mayor. You mean there was a third party there in the fox chamber? 
Exactly. And this could be the beaut this could be the big break we've been looking for. Excuse me. Trying to adjust to using Apollo's voice again. <laughs> in court, anyway. There does seem to be a hole in the prosecution's argument. Prosecutor Blackwell, would you care to respond to the defense's assertion? Goodbye, Apollo theme. Hmm. The least you could do is look at me while you're being dismissive. Your mind is as dull as an unhon an unhoned blade, Justice Dono. Justice Dono? He's been watching way too many samurai flicks. It will take mo far more than that to cut down Simon Blackwell. A whelp such as you has no hope against my superior swordsmanship. This is a trial, not a sword fight, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> there is a perfectly good explanation for the lack of prints on the statue. You might recall that blood-stained cloth found at the scene of the crime. Well, it just so happens that the blood was the mayor's. So, um, what are you getting at? Hone your mind, boy. Was there... Why was there blood on that cloth? Solve that riddle and you shall see that the hole you thought you found is but an illusion. Now let's see. How was that cloth used? Was it used... You know what? I'm gonna pick something random. The alderman was probably wearing it over his head. What? Do you truly think the alderman would show up to a meeting over the fate of his village? Wearing this ridiculous looking cloth over his head. Sure. They had a festival that day, didn't they? Who's to say he didn't party a little too hard and just forgot to take it off? <laughs> okay, fine. So maybe he didn't do that. Can I try one more time? Now let's see. How was that cloth used? Was it used to wrap the statue? Maybe the alderman wrapped the statue in the cloth. In short, he wasn't touching the statue directly when he used it to strike back at the mayor. Ah! Precisely. Bully for you, boy. Ah, oh, it was nothing. Apollo, don't let him start manipulating you, too! You just closed the hole for the prosecution! I did? Uh, I, I did! Right. That a statue wrapped in cloth would leave no fingerprints is as plain as day. But this also proves there are no holes in our theory of the alderman striking back. Oops. Ah! Good job, Apollo. <laughs> now, do you see how dull your mind is? I'll make sure to sharpen the it next time. A particularly frightening inmate once told me that. He always tenderly honed his blaze before he went to work, like the samurai of yore. Samurai? Sounds more like a homicidal maniac to me. Actually, he was working in the prison kitchen at the time. Wait, so the inmate was a murdering samurai prison chef? Yes, that is exactly it, Apollo. Hmm, it would seem that the victim and his killer were the only ones there after all. I was kind of attached to that hole. Now what? Apollo, I just thought of something. If they didn't find anyone's fingerprints on the statue, who's to say someone other than the alderman didn't hit the mayor with it? Why didn't I think of that? Anybody, anybody could have not left prints on it. <laughs> then who, pray tell, struck the mayor with the statue? Please, illuminate us with your wisdom, young lady. There's only one answer. The real killer! Prove the existence of this real killer, then. What evidence have you? Oh, I'll give you evidence, all right! Athena, are you sure about this? To borrow your words, Apollo, I'm fine! Take a look at this! Black feathers and tracks allegedly from a yokai were found at the scene. I believe they're from the third party who struck the mayor with that statue. Is the defense actually suggesting some sort of monster killed that alderman? That's exactly what I'm suggesting! Objection! 
No, Athena, you you just lost what little credibility we had left. Ah! Sorry, sorry. I guess I got carried away. Mr. Justice, we have no time to deal with objections between members of the defense. Sorry, Your Honor. It's just the, this kid's still, well, a kid. Ouch! You meanie! I'm reporting this to Mr. Wright! So, is this court to believe the feathers and tracks are from a yokai, as you put it? Uh, no, Your Honor. I believe they are a fabrication. The real killer wants us to believe some sort of monster murdered the alderman. Hmm, interesting. And why do you suppose the killer would do that? Um, why indeed? Mr. Justice, you seem as new to this as your partner is. Ouch. This I'm not reporting to Mr. Wright. <sighs> Fulbright, explain to Zbaltus what these brats are missing. You know, the who, the who and why behind those feathers and tracks. What? You mean you can actually explain that? Ha ha ha! Our, investiga our investigative powers is without equal. I'm starting to think I chose the wrong profession. Very well, let's hear about these so-called yokai feathers and tracks. Badum. This entire case centers on one man's attempt to crush opposition to the municipal merger. Mayor Temba panicked when the amazing Ninetales helped embo embolden the, the protesters. So he stoked the villagers' fears by fabricating a monster. The strange feathers and tracks he planted made it look like a yokai was the killer. Is that so? Those feathers and tracks stoked the villagers' fears? Absolutely! He knew exactly how to prey on their superstitious minds. Those feathers only gave weight to the idea that the alderman was slain by a demon. The accursed, the accursed demon Tenmataru, that is. Tenma who? Tenmataru, the legendary demon locked away in the village's forbidden chamber. From a young age, the villagers are taught to fear the great black feathered demon, and thus were they blinded to other, more plausible explanations. Hold it! Hold on for a second, before we start letting our imaginations run wild. Isn't there someone else that could be considered a suspect? Mr. Justice, please explain yourself. On the day of the incident, there was a special event held at QB Manor. And as part of this event, there was someone dressed li in the likeness of Ten Motaro. Obviously, this person is a much more likely suspect than any legendary demon. Objection! Dullard, you are playing right into the killer's mind games. What? Listen here. The feathers and tracks were merely red herrings. The villagers believed the murder to be worked of the vic of the real Tenmotaro. However, the police believe that the person in the Tenmotaro suit is the killer. Ah! The defendant sought to sow his disconfusion in order to deflect the blame away from himself. However, he was knocked unconscious by the alderman. And thus, our mentally deficient mayor was caught red-handed at the scene of the crime. Objection! Do you honestly believe Mayor Temma would do something so stupid? Objection! The evidence speaks for itself. Fulbright. Right, of, it was the mayor's last-ditch effort to stop the opposition before things got crazy. The amazing Ninetales was fueling both the yokai craze and the anti-murder movement. Plus, he was one of the better-known masked wrestlers and the hometown favorite. That's why the mayor panicked and set out on the path of injustice. But do the people of Ninetales really believe that a yokai is behind the crime? Yokai sightings are an everyday event there, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Hmm, I must say, a crime that preys upon innocent, impressionable minds. Just so, a particularly silver tongue inmate once had the following words for me. The innocent of heart are the easiest prey. You don't say! Was this inmate a con artist? No. He was framed for the murder of his beloved. I actually felt sorry for the poor chap. Wait, so he wasn't the predator, or rather the prey? <laughs> Yo, 
yes, well... Now then, the defendant may proceed with their cross-examination. Which we will do in the next video, because we've hit our 30-minute mark. So I'll see you guys in the next video.